God bless you. God bless you. I want you to share and share and share and share that God will bless you and increase you as we speak about accessing spiritual gates. Now notice I did not say heavenly gates. I said spiritual. There's a reason why I said spiritual and not heavenly. You have to understand that we have we have this physical realm itself is it's entangled with the spiritual realm. Amen. This physical realm itself is entangled with the spiritual realm yes. whereby an angel can stand next to you and you will not see the angel not because the angel is not there but because an angel is standing on the other side of the veil so we have the we have the the atmospheric spiritual realm that is here on this planet whereby even the devil and demons they operate from that side but all these realms both the physical and the and the spiritual they depend on something being unlocked in the heavenly realms for it to be received in that realm and then come to this physical realm an example when the lord jesus spirit had entered the atmospheric spiritual realm that is here on earth even witches and wizards knew that Jesus is about to be born immediately they started looking to kill him instantly they were looking to kill him they didn't know where he was but everybody was aware anyone that was spiritual knew that there is a king that is being born they even knew the area that he would be in but they did not know exactly where he would be they started searching for him looking for a way to kill him that they ended up killing every child under 2 years right? Right, right yeah every child under 2 years this also happened in egypt this also happened in egypt now how did they know that somebody great was coming into the earth how did they know this is because they understood the gates that open spiritually just like Jesus told Peter you are the rock i will build my church on and the gates of hell shall not prevail so even gate even hell has gates and have a watch and a time that those gates are opened and they are closed they are opened and they are closed they are opened and they are closed it's not open 24/7 so somebody who desires to understand spiritual warfare or to fight spiritual warfares and you do not understand the watches or the times that spiritual gates are accessible you are in trouble you'll be praying a miss a lot not because god is not answering you but you don't understand the timing that is tied to the gates being opened because you don't understand the timing that the gates are opened so when the bible is saying pray without ceasing when the bible says pray without ceasing if you are truly somebody who is the, on the pursuit of god to pray you know it's impossible to pray without ceasing it's impossible for you to be 24 hours rabakashata unless you are on a prayer retreat or you have taken time to be in prayer mm-hmm. even then you have times that you have to sleep yes you have time where you have to rest you have to stop take a sip of water right. <laughs> and then go back raba bakata by fire by fire but you will still rest so why is the bible say pray without ceasing how can you pray without ceasing If you don't understand the watches and accessing spiritual gates it will be impossible for you to pray without ceasing. Mm. Wow. You will pray but you will not be able to pray without ceasing. Now I know a lot of people are hearing me say watches of the day watches 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 you will understand in a second. 
But what I'm trying to train you and I'm trying to bring your understanding to is this. What I'm trying to train you and give and bring your attention and your understanding to is this. There are moments that the spiritual realm is accessible to everybody. The heavenly realms is accessible for the believers only. But the spiritual realm is accessible to everyone. This is why the kings of Egypt could dream and it was God speaking to them. The pharaoh of Egypt had a dream and he woke up. He said, I need somebody to interpret this. Joseph comes, tells him, the Lord was warning the king of what was going to happen. You, you are a believer, you don't even know if it's a dream from God or for the devil. And by the way, there are no dreams from the devil. Hmm. If you understand wow. scripture, there's no dreams from the devil. All dreams come from God. That's why the Bible says this. That's why the Bible says this. He says, when, when Joseph stood before Pharaoh, he says, even uh, Daniel used the same statement. Do not all dreams come from God. <laughs> a nightmare is not a dream. A nightmare is your spirit left your body and you got attacked. Uh, That's not a dream. (laughs) No dream is from the devil, but we'll talk about that another time. Is people don't understand dream interpretation. Remember when I did the dream interpretation on the phone? Mm -hmm. When I did uh, uh, dream interpretation and there was a lot of people watching, and people thought this dream was this, this was that. The devil, I said, ah, ah, ah. And then when I gave them the interpretation of the dream, everybody was shocked. Was like, eh? Wow. Okay. I didn't know. How come this, that, you know? Uh, my son Richard Jones, God bless you. My daughter Erica, Elias, God bless you. Christine Williams, God bless you. So is somebody getting this? So I want to bless people with something that I taught the private group and then tonight I'll teach the private group something very private. (laughs) (laughs) But I'll give you an introduction to this. Glory be to Jesus. Glory Glory be to Jesus. Christine Williams, God bless you. Uh, Blessed and highly favored, God bless you. Now watch this. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Are we there? Amen. Amen. Are we there? Mm-hmm. Uh, can you sure. read it? Mm-hmm. Starting the first verse. Yeah, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Mm-hmm. And the earth was without form uh-huh. and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Mm-hmm. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh-huh. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Mm-hmm. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Notice, this doesn't even make sense. If you're not spiritual, you will not understand what is happening here. God said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. He created light. Mm -hmm. Now, darkness did not exist because darkness was not created either. Mm -hmm. So God did not say, let there be light because there was darkness. Because remember, nothing is created. So even darkness itself cannot exist. <laughs> uh, are you, is this making sense? It's not like God made and there were no lights. So he said, oh, I forgot to put lights. No, that's not it. <laughs> because the Bible tells you, light and darkness, they are all the same to thee. You see all. Mm. So God is not confined by anything that he has created. I don't know if somebody is catching me. Yes, Papa. But notice this. God says, let there be light. And it divides the light from the darkness, meaning darkness is also light. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm going to separate two things, it means they're inseparable. They are the same thing. Mm. This is why people use like infrared goggles and things like that. And then the night becomes just like day. Meaning it is our capacity to convert that light that we don't have for us to see through it. Mm. Wow. It's not that it's not light. It's just a different form of light. Mm-hmm. 
And we are, when we are talking about darkness here, we are not talking about darkness in the context of the devil. Mm. No. Or evil. Or evil. Thank you. Or evil. Now watch this. But when God makes the light, he calls one day and calls the other one night. Now immediately you understand something by what God is doing. They are not confined to hours. They are confined to what he called them to be. So day is not when the sun is up. Mm. Night is not when the sun is down. Because this is neither the sun or the moon. This is just light that God is making that mm. cannot be perceived. These are spiritual things that God is forming here. Right. Mm. And God decided to call one day and the other one night. And then it continues to say, and the evening and the morning were the first day. That tells you even the evening and the morning were not based on the light and darkness. Mm. Because how is God counting morning and evening, yet there is no way to measure morning and evening, both in the physical realm, because there is no sun, there is no moon, and neither in the heavenly realm, because there is no, there's no sun, there is no moon, there is no night. The source of light in the heavenly realm is God himself. So what is this morning and evening that God is calling morning and evening, yet there is no morning and evening? Wow. What he names is the one he calls night, another one he calls darkness, and then he said, and the morning and the evening were the first day. So God decides to count days without ever being a measure of days. Mm. So what is God counting? Mm. I wish people would share this. Mm. This is good. Mm. This is good. Ay, 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 ay. I wish more people would share this. Ethan, my son, God bless you. Watching from Ghana, God bless you. Are, are people comprehending this? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Uh, what happened? Yeah, YouTube is killing it right now. I hope Periscope is also sharing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. So what is God measuring? What is the measure that God is using? Mm -hmm. Teach us. What is the measure that God is using? Because you see, God is, is creating things in the confined of a certain thing that he created. Yeah. FTHW, God bless you. God bless you. Naomi Ruth, God bless you. Hallelujah. My son Samuel, who does all the amazing graphics, God bless you. He's very faithful. And uh, I've been meant to, to be calling him, but our times are just missing out. Hopefully after this live, if you will still be up, son, I'll call you. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? Yes, yes, Papa. So what is the measure that God is using to measure? Read the next verse. Continue reading. I just want to show, run this point even home even more. Keep reading. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Mm -hmm. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Mm -hmm. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Mm -hmm. And it was so. Uh -huh. And God called the firmament heaven. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Which evening and morning? <laughs> <laughs> and notice even to show you that God is measuring days in a very opposite way, the way more than how humans we think about it, because we don't count days beginning from the evening. Mm -hmm. yes. On earth, we count days based on the morning yes. to, the e to, the, to the next morning. Mm -hmm. Then we say it's a day. 24 hours, one day. Yeah. 24 hours, one day. But God is counting from the evening and the morning. That is one day to God in his measure. Now remember when the Bible is saying God created the world or everything in six days and on the seventh day he rested. You have to understand that the word day there doesn't mean 24 hours. Because the concept of time to God is not our concept. 
Yes. It is like me it's like you saying on the day on the days in the day of 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 of, of Elijah mm. those were indeed powerful days. We are not saying that it was one day that Elijah was powerful. We are saying in the measure of time yeah. that Elijah was alive or existed it was a powerful day. We are not measuring his years. Mm. It's a figure of speech. Mm. So we don't yeah. know if it was 24 hours, if it was 1 million years, if it was 1 billion years. We have no clue of measuring it. Wow. Anyone who tells you we know exactly that it was 24 hours is a lie. Wow. It could have been a second, but an eternal second, what is it to us? Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory, Glory be to God. God. So are you are you listening to me children of God? So it is not in the measurement of what people think. But what I'm trying to explain to you is this. What I'm trying to explain to you is this. The measure of a day or what God calls a day is not really talking about a day. He may be referring to a season he did something. That is why it's funny the Bible says a day is like a thousand years, years unto God. So your 24 hours can be like a thousand years to him. So if you pray for 24 hours in the spirit, it's like you have spent a thousand years. That is just a measurement to tell you that 24 hours converts to a lot spiritually. Mm -hmm. Not because somebody spent a thousand years before God in that sense. Mm -hmm. It is like, it's a measure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, is somebody catching what I'm saying here? Yes, yes. Now, so catch this. So catch this, children, catch this. Everything that God is doing is confining it to a day, an evening and the morning, evening and the morning, evening and the morning. Let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. Haven't you ever asked yourself a question? Why do witches operate at night? And just not when the sun has gone down. They have a certain hour. They have a certain time that they do most to juju than any time. Right. Not because in the day they can't perform juju. Wow. It's not because in the day they don't perform juju. No. They understand the hours that those gates are available. In the spiritual realm, a day is like, a day is released from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. You see how we say, the Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it really means? When you understand this message, you understand what it means. Of course, every day is made by God. But notice how the psalmist is saying it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He's not just saying that every day is the day that the Lord has made. In that sense, there is something special about this day. I'll be glad and rejoice in it. Why is he saying that? Because in the spiritual realm, let me find uh, an example. Uh, uh, let, me, let me show it to you. Uh, let me show you an example. Let me borrow this for you, okay? This is the day. It has not been released from heaven yet. Mm -hmm. This is the day that has not been released from heaven yet. Mm -hmm. 
when a certain when a certain time comes that day is released into the spiritual atmosphere that everybody has access to then another hour comes where the day now is released into the natural realm at that opening of that hour is very critical because whoever will possess that day whatever they do before it's released in the material world can have influence to manipulate the day the way they want wow. so witches and wizards they know this secret they are active at night at a certain hour and we will go to specific times of operations the reason why they do that is because they try to influence the day with accidents with calamities with spells so that the people of God can be destroyed that's why the bible says the moon shall not harm you the moon shall the, the sun shall not harm you by day nor the moon by night how can the sun and the moon harm you yeah. meaning somebody is taking control and perverting what the son is supposed to do using it as a weapon against the children of God the bible says the enemy prepareth a, 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 a snare for you in the night so that in the day you fall in it you are destroyed but these are spiritual things that Christians read the psalms they think they are just beautiful sayings but they don't understand this is actually spiritual warfare right. wow. anyone that does not understand the watches of the day cannot perform spiritual warfare and if they overcome is simply by the grace of god not because they know what they're doing it's too much not because they know what they're doing not because they know what they're doing i i don't know if somebody can hear me we hear you we hear you Hallelujah. 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 Not because they know what they are doing. Is somebody hearing me? It simply it's simply purely simply purely grace. Simply purely grace. I'll say it again. Simply and purely grace. That's it. even angels even angels operate at a certain hour before we get to even angel think about it like this think about it like this the lord jesus the lord jesus is going to jerusalem mm -hmm. he tells his disciples he tells his disciples this he says um sell a coat and buy a sword they said why they said Jesus said for it is not good for a prophet to die out of the city notice the lord jesus was making sure he's not only protected spiritually but he was making sure he's protected physically mm -hmm. when peter had a knife to cut somebody's ear off i know why you're laughing when 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 peter had his ear cut off i cut the the soldier's mm -hmm. ear off mm -hmm. Where did he get that knife? Jesus is the one who told him to buy the knife. But Jesus said, "Protect me until I enter the city. Once I enter the city, they cannot kill me because the prophecy will be fulfilled. If they kill me outside of the city, the prophecy will not be fulfilled." So Jesus knew that the wicked ones had control of the outside the city. If he entered the city or secure the prophecy will be fulfilled, he will be crucified. Wow. But if they get him outside of the city, it's a snare they are planning to kill him. Come on papa. That's good teacher. So if somebody doesn't have wisdom, they will just say, "Oh, God said we should go. Let's just go because God mm, wisdom is very important. If yeah. you don't understand the paths that have been secure, you will not be able to know." Mm. Because notice Jerusalem was secure for me for him eternally. It had nothing to do with this prayer. It had everything to do with what God had already ordained. That's good. So nobody could take Jerusalem from what the party was supposed to play. But outside of Jerusalem, mm, that's why Jesus had to navigate, hide, 
show up in other places, not show up in other places. Mm -hmm. But when he got to Jerusalem, he made himself public. I I wish somebody could hear me. Let's hear you. Are you getting it? And when I say again, listen to me. When I say again, when I'm saying again, this is the day that the Lord has made. Every day comes from God. But a day that is not secured by God is not God's. What does that mean? Remember what Jesus said. There is a God of this world. That God of this world is trying to make sure that his will comes to pass on the earth. There is also a God who is the creator of everything. If you read Matthew chapter 6, the Lord Jesus is telling his disciples, Pray after this man, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. The purpose of a believer is to understand the watches so that the will, there will be the vehicle that the will of God will be carried out because the will of God is not independent of the man. Adam was put on earth to carry out the will of God. So if there is no one praying, if there's no one going to preach to people, if there's no one uh, interceding, the will of God cannot be happening on earth. It's just impossible. Right. Wow. Listen again. This is not for immature people, foolish people. The will of God will be carried out on this planet as long as there are believers who will pray. The will of God will never happen in your life unless you pray. God called me as a prophet. Do you think that voids me from praying? Ah, I have to pray seriously. And I continuously pray. Because as long as I'm praying, then his will can be implemented. Then I have, then I am, then I am not only interacting, Mm -hmm. but I'm doing an exchange with heaven. Consistently and continually. The moment I stop praying, the moment I start missing the mark with heaven, why? Because there's no more interaction. Mm. Is somebody capturing what I'm saying? Yes. We're catching Papa. Catching. The kingdom of God is not a location. It's a manifestation of God. So when Jesus was saying, uh, re- repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent means change your mind. Notice he did not say ask for forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness and repentance are two different things. Some people don't know the difference. Repent means change your mind. How do we know that? First of all, because that's what it means. Number two, when Moses was on the mountain with God, God told him, I'm going to destroy all the Israelites and I will make a new covenant with you. And immediately he said, when God told him that, Moses said, Lord, how could you bring them from Egypt and bring them to the wilderness to destroy them? What will other nations say about you? Lord, repent of this evil. And the Bible says, and God repented. God never sinned. He was saying, God, change your mind concerning what you're about to do. It will be evil for other nations. They will think you are bad because they don't know the sins they are committing. Mm. And God repented and said, okay, go tell them to stop. So when Jesus is saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The word kingdom is the word basilia. Basilia means royal anointing or royal appointment. He's not talking about a location. He's talking about the ability to execute on behalf of heaven. Is somebody catching what I'm saying here? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Is somebody catching what I'm saying here? Is somebody catching what I'm saying here? Yes, Papa. So listen to me and listen to me well. Uh, Stacy Cotman says, since I started sewing into this ministry only a little over a month, $15,000 in debt disappeared from my student loan. I had 
I had to share this testimony. Glory be to God. We thank God for you, Stacy. God Amen. is a good God. God is extremely a good God. So, are you listening to me, children? Naomi, Ruth, God bless you. Are you listening to me, children? Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this best way that you can. Let me give you scriptures because I feel like we may have to do another part of this because this is too much. Can you tell Drew because of uh, Uncle Christian? He can't do that. Now, I'm going to give you certain points that will help you to understand the watches of the day. Amen. Let me give you a scripture for you to read and this this should be a blessing to you. Uh go to go to um Psalms 110 verse 3. Psalms 110 verse 3. Psalms 110 verse 3. Are you there? Yep. Okay, read it. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, and the beauties of the holiness from the womb of the morning. Ah. Thou hast thou do of thy youth. Read it again. <laughs> thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. On the day of thy power. Mm -hmm. And the beauties of the holiness from the womb of the morning. So the beauty of the holiness comes from the womb of the morning. Wow. So you cannot have the day of power unless you have the womb of holiness and the glory of God. And then what does it say? Continue. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Hmm. So the results you get is based on the womb of the morning. <laughs> wow. 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 Hey. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But what you need to understand now is what is the morning to God. Yes. Because the morning to God is not the morning that we think is the morning. Yes. Because remember, he's saying the evening and the morning were the first day. So what is the morning to God and what is the morning to us? Yes. Because our morning doesn't matter as long as we know what he calls morning. Yes. Right. That's good. Let me give you a verse that will bless you even more. I think Amen. we have to do another part of this. Amen. Because I think just establishing this to make people understand this is, is uh, very important. Uh, let me show you this. Uh, let me find something. Uh, let me find this. It's a... Uh, I'm trying to find something that will show you. Even as I was saying, angels, even angels, even angels themselves, they function off the gates. Mm. Mm. There are angels that are always moving around, but there are specific angels that are designed to operate at a specific time. Yeah. Wow. Are you ready for this? Let me show you something. Mm. Oh, Jesus. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 32, verse 22. Genesis 32 from verse 22 to 32. Genesis 32, 22 to 32. Genesis 20, uh, chapter 32, verse 22 to 32. Okay. Yeah, go for it. And he rose up, at the, and he rose up that night mm -hmm. and took his two wives and his two woman servants mm -hmm. and his eleven sons and passed over the four of Jebuk. Mm -hmm. And he took them and sent them over the brook yes. and sent them over that he had. Mm -hmm. And Jacob was left alone. Mm -hmm. 
and there wrestled with the man with, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Yes. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, mm -hmm. he touched the hollow of his thigh, mm -hmm. and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint mm -hmm. as he wrestled with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. Ah uh ah. -uh. The angel is complaining. When Jacob was wrestling with him, he never complained. Yeah. But the moment he continued to wrestle with him, the angel now had to move his hip out of place right. and told him, Listen, let me go because the day breaketh. Right. His hours of operation were done. Mm. Saying, All right, man, we had fun. Right. It's time for me to go because day is about to break. Right. Wow. <laughs> Huh? It's, time to bounce. it's time to bounce. I can't be around anymore because my hours of operation are done. Then listen to what Jacob says. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. Uh -huh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? Notice, Jacob threatened. He said, I wouldn't let you go unless you bless me. So you miss your blessing because you don't know how to arrest angels to release what is yours. Ha! <laughs> 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 deep, deep. There are certain things that you will never get until you contend for it. That's why the Bible says contend. Mm. Notice when the Lord appeared unto Abraham, when the Abraham was sitting at the cool of the evening uh, of the day, it's sun and he's just sitting outside. Mm -hmm. Three men were walking by. Remember when this angel appeared, it says he wrestled with a man. Mm. Then the man turns into an angel. We'll talk about that another mm. time. But notice, he saw three men walking. And it was Abraham that ran to them and said, Please, my Lord, come in and eat with your servant. Let me wash your feet. He was like, no, I don't know about that. He said, please. Notice they didn't identify themselves. It was Abraham's ability to know mm. That made God come and sit down in his house. Then God started speaking. Mm -hmm. By this time next year, I will visit your wife and she will have a child. What if he just ignored them as strangers? Do you think God was going to enter his house? Mm. Abraham was aware of certain watches. That's why he sat outside. Wow. And when he saw, he knew, ah, that's God. So when he ran to the three men, he did not say, three sirs. He said, my Lord. He was addressing one mm -hmm. of them because one of them was the Lord. Yeah. Wow. But the Bible tells you three men. Then after they eat, after everything happens, then the, the Lord walks out. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Abraham, shall I hide anything from Abraham my servant, seeing that you will be a great nation? Mm. But wow. Lord, you are about to pass by my house. If I didn't stop you, you are not going to tell me what was going to happen. So mean, meaning God is looking for who to contend with him. Who wants it bad? Right. Wow. So if you don't know the times, Deep. You will just survive off grace, yet you are supposed to be even above grace. Wow. Many Christians let things happen. They let things flow. Yet God doesn't want you to let things flow. He wants you to be in control. Wow. Aish. I don't know if somebody is hearing me. They hear you. We hear you. Imagine, the Lord is saying, I came to see Abraham to reveal to him what I will do. But you are about to pass like a stranger. Right. That the Bible even encourages you, entertain strangers. Some of you have entertained the angels unknowing. Meaning when an angel comes to visit you, he will never advertise himself if he comes in the flesh. He will take you to be kind, kind of heart and to be spiritual enough to sense, who are you? Mm. Uh-uh, you, I know you. I feel like I'm talking to myself. We hear you. We're so here. Jacob is being blessed. Because he said, if you don't bless me, you will miss your shift. <laughs> ah. I feel it myself in my spirit. Let me show you something. Wow. Wow. He said, listen, today you will be in trouble with God because I will not let you go until... The angel had to bless him. And saying, ah, you, you are blessed. The angel had to give him a blessing that God was going to give him later. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that what the blessing that the angel released on him was something that was not established until later. When God now decided to bless him. When God changed his name to Israel. Mm -hmm. The angel didn't even know his name. 
The angel said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, no, your name is Israel. In heaven, they already call you Israel. You'll be a great nation. Wow. Then the angel leaves. Notice he received pre, pre-information yeah. because of his positioning. I, I, I feel like, let, let, me, let me give you something. Imagine, he's being given something before. And remember, when Jacob left there, his name was still not Israel. Yeah. He was still called Jacob. Yeah. Even though the angel told him, listen, your name is Israel. I'm just letting you know. By the way, your name is Israel. Yeah. You'll be a great nation. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Lord Jesus. If people would understand this message, it would change everything for them. Let me give you a, a, a scripture. Hmm. And then maybe I'll do a part two of this and it will bless people. This is why I, I always explain something to, to, to you children of God. And sons and daughters and Elias generation is this. Don't be just impressed with people who are saying prophetic, angelic. You know people who know things and they are really sent to you because of their ability to empower you to enter into what God is saying. Aren't you excited to be praying more now? Amen. Amen. Because you know the power of prayer is connected to a certain hour. To a certain things that govern something. It's not just random shouting and praying. There's a science to it. The Lord Jesus prayed according to a certain time. While well, people are contending with this, even, even uh, uh, Daniel, all the prophets that I know, that they are genuine seasoned prophets, they know about this. Many of them just don't know how to tell it to people. Mm. But I believe God sent me to tell it to you. Amen. Amen. Notice what Jesus is telling his disciples. He takes three of his disciples, he goes to pray. Okay, let me just show you something. When the Lord Jesus was praying on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus was praying during the whole night. Because his disciples woke up and they saw things happening, they were like, Moses and Elijah are here. God, what is happening? Notice the angel before the, the one that unlocks the morning. He always transforms people. You are not Jacob. You are Israel. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Jesus is just minding his business praying. All of a sudden they are looking, Jesus' clothes are changed. Mm. Elijah and, and, and Moses are there. Ah, what is happening? Notice. They were visiting him at a certain hour. <laughs> their visitations hour, their visitation hours, just like the hospital. Wow. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. There's a time that angels of direction are released. There are times that angels of destiny are released. There's a time that angels of deliverance are released. There are shifts. Wow. I see my brother, the great prophet David Angel. God bless you. Did you tell him? So is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is it Ask. safe to say that there are like different advantages to praying at in the day or at night? Yes, a hundred percent. Always. Mm. Always. Huh? Job chapter thirty-eight, verse twelve to thirteen. Job 38, 12 to 13. Hmm? 
Lydia Wargu says, this is deep. I have not heard these mysteries like this before. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Welcome to the Revelation Zone. Amen. Amen. A true prophet is an interpreter of the unseen. Is a mediator. Yeah. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Read. Mm -hmm. Has thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know its place? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Read slowly, like savor it. God is talking to God is talking to Job. Uh -huh. Has thou commanded the morning since thy days? Mm -hmm. and cause the day spring to know his place. So the day spring does not know its place unless you command the morning. Wow. Mm. Some of you, your day just goes all over the... <laughs> mm. <laughs> I wish people would listen. Are people catching what I'm saying? Yes, Papa. Mm. This is, deep. Is, this guy, is, this, is this making sense to somebody? Yeah. Read it one more time. Has thou commanded the morning since thy days? So God is asking Job, have you commanded the morning since thy days? Meaning from the time that you have been praying, have you ever commanded the morning? Do you know why? The devil would have never had a place to Job if he commanded the morning. Wow. Mm. <laughs> That's, wow. Wow. He would have never even had an opportunity. That's why the Bible says we must possess the enemy's gate. Mm. If you possess the enemy's gate before the enemy decides to strike you, you already disarmed them. That's good. That's deep. The Bible literally tells you. The Bible, literally, the, the Bible literally tells you, possess your enemy's gate. Possess it. Possess it, meaning before the devil even attacked, you already attacked him and dismantled him. All right. But the problem is you wait for the devil to attack you. Now you are being defensive instead of being offensive. Wow. No one wins a war by being defensive. You win a war by being offensive. Have you ever commanded the morning since thy days to tell the spring what 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 is that word again go ahead and cause the day spring to know his place the day spring what is spring the blooming the blessing that flows in a day spring. have you have, have you told them their place meaning if you don't know their place the enemy can be sitting on your miracle the enemy can be consuming your miracle. Wow. Come on. The enemy might be stealing your money, may Come be on. taking your health, may be taking this because you have never commanded the day. Now notice, and that day is not... <laughs> listen to what God is telling him. Have you ever commanded the morning since thy days? Meaning the morning is a person. Wow. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Uh, we're here, pal. It's just like when the Bible says, grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Grace and mercy are angels. Mm -hmm. it, you, somebody's not catching this. Even the day spring, it says to know his place. It, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah. Grace and mercy... Grace and mercy, they are angels. Wow. Because notice you're not receiving them. The Bible is saying, grace and mercy shall follow me. Where they am going, they are also going. They are not ahead of you. Because you want favor ahead of you. You want mercy ahead of you. You want grace of God to cover you. But here it's saying, grace and mercy shall follow me hmm. all the days of my life. It's talking about angels. But people who don't know the spiritual realm will never know. Hmm. So there are angels that are waiting for you. That's why the Bible says that angels wait. Wait. The Bible says in Psalms, uh, Praise the Lord all ye his angels that excel in strength, who do his will, hearkening to the voice of his word. Who is the voice? God, Jesus is not the voice. Jesus is the word. 
So who is the voice? The voice is you. So if you don't know how to take charge, what happens is you will be very ineffective spiritually. Mm. You will be dry. You will be what we call dry bones. You will be what we call dry bones. No results. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Aha. Uh-huh. Jijo Philip says in the in the New Testament he says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is <laughs> an angel. <laughs> there are things that are hidden that it takes you to be spiritual for you to see. I think maybe tonight or tomorrow I'm going to come back and give you those hours or should I give the hours now? I should give the hours now. If I give the hours mm-hmm. now, okay, if I did it tomorrow I would have given them more, but I'll give them the hours now. Now, as far as God is concerned, he divided the day into two watches, the evening and the morning. The evening and the morning. The evening and the morning. That's how God divided it. Now, somebody who wants to pray without ceasing, you have to know the watches of the day because if you know the watches of the day, if you pray at the beginning of the watch, you have covered the whole day with your prayer. Okay. So you won't need to sit somewhere shara ba 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 24/7 because it's impossible. Because God commands you to work. He who does not work shall not eat. So you cannot be 24/7. It's impossible. We would love that, but it's just not realistic. And even God knows that. So whoever is able to control the watches becomes automatically powerful. So God divided it into two watches. The evening and the morning. the evening and the morning 6 p.m. and the morning gate the, the the evening the evening gate is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. the morning is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. that was god's concept Now the Lord Jesus now in the time of the Jews Now just to clarify to you the two times that God said that's why the Bible does not say you are blessed going out and coming in The Bible says you are blessed coming in and going now, out right. because God measures the day by the evening God's beginning of the day is the evening mm-hmm. the morning is the end Why is it like that because everything is a replay to God it's already happened mm-hmm. So what has happened is taking is happening in the day. Mm-hmm. So he's saying you are blessed coming in and going out. So if you're blessed coming in, it means you already went out and came back. Mm. Yeah. Because God always starts from the end to the beginning, not the beginning to the end. Right, right. Did that make sense, Bishop Arke? Okay. So God doesn't 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 operate the way our brain operates. He operates the other way. I wish somebody would type hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Ay ay ay. Ah. <laughs> hmm. How is going to go deep but I think because of time. Let me do it like this. Okay.
So in the time in the time of uh, of the prophets like Daniel and many others they divided it into three watches of the day. They divided it into three watches of the day. The first the first watch which was the morning the second watch which was the noon the third watch which was the evening that's why you find that Daniel prayed three times a day because he understood if i can control these watches mm. then i have full control of my day that is why when they captured Daniel they threw him in the lions den he already had taken care of the lion before so by the time they are throwing him um, in the lions right. den the lion was already relaxed because he already Steve. came back mm -hmm. before he went in What does the Bible say when the morning when the when the king came and said Daniel servant of the most high God are you there notice the king could not sleep the whole morning watch an angel had come and come down the the, the lions mm. So by the time that the king is coming he said ah king may you live forever the lord had sent his angels and shut them out of the of the lions so the lions could not attack him because they were already taken care of the man understood the watches of the day wow when they came to arrest him they arrested him in the second watch of the second watch of prayer they found him praying some of you the problem is the enemy finds you not in your watch You just let the work the day go and you wake up you say lord i thank you amen <laughs> you go to sleep as i lay me down amen <laughs> yet bazooka's nuclear bombs are flying over you if it was not for the mercy of god that's why when you wait to pray like add the calamity strikes yes like playing catch up yes like, you're playing uh -huh. a lot of people are playing catch up Let me give you now in the time of the Lord Jesus the watch was divided into four watches The first the middle and the morning watch Notice the first watch is not really the morning watch <laughs> So when the prophets were praying they had the first watch the middle watch and then the morning watch So the first watch was not the morning watch the morning watch was the was the was the was the third watch before the first watch because we count days according to God the evening then the morning Is that making sense mm -hmm. Now in the time of the Lord Jesus they changed it they didn't change it but they added another watch so that we are fully engaged the first watch is 6 p.m to 9 p.m that's the evening because that's the beginning as far as god is concerned 6 p.m to 9 p.m is the first watch Six p.m. to nine p.m. is your first watch. The second watch is nine p.m. to twelve a.m. The third watch is twelve a.m. to three a.m. Out of all this, the most important watch is the fourth watch, which is the morning. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Would you like me to say that again for people? Yes, Papa. Yes, please. Huh? Mm. I think you're right. I give people a chance. Imagine the Lord Jesus was telling the disciples 
the Lord Jesus was telling the disciples on the fourth watch, on the third watch, he told them, listen, watch and pray with me. The guys fell asleep. Then the Lord Jesus came back. He said, you could not even watch with me even for an hour. Mm. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray that you do not fall into temptation. You fall into temptation because you did not take over the watch. Mm. Well, the third watch is what time again? The third watch is 3 a.m. Um, 3 a.m. to... Uh, wait. It's midnight to 3 a.m. Midnight to 3 a.m. Okay. Midnight to 3 a.m. Yes. So, what, what about the other times, like the daytime, like now, like let's say 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. or 12 p.m. to 3 p.m.? You just have to, and I just apply it. So, find a way now. That's where now you have to think what those hours apply to your day because there are people who are in China, there are people who are in Africa. Somebody's first watch may not be my first watch based on geographical location. Are you getting what I'm saying? My question was also, are there, are there more than four watches? Because no. these, well, the rest of the day is just like right now. Mm -hmm. No, there are. It is no, there every, every, notice those hours cover every hour of the day pretty much. There's no hour that is left out. But the most important one is the evening and the morning. Those two. If you can miss anything, please don't miss those. The 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and the 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't miss those. Those two watches are very critical. Yes. So realistically, should we you have like, one minute. Uh -huh. Should you just figure out ways to implement them all? Because you might not be able to do it every day. No, you, 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 have, you have to be disciplined enough to do it. Because if you are not consistent with something, then you are not really wanting it bad. So you have to make a routine whereby your whole life revolves ag around that. Because if your whole life does not revolve around that, then you cannot get the results you want in your life especially if it pertains to spirituality. You just can't. Okay. Haven't you ever noticed your best dreams are usually 3 a.m. to 6 p.m.? Even visions, you feel like, mm -hmm. I feel like this dream was so vivid, this dream. Mm. It's because of that time. Yes. Okay, 30 seconds. <laughs> Some of you, you sleep and you feel something wakes you up, you see it's 3 a.m. You don't know why you are woken up. <laughs> your angel is trying to tell you, my friend, take over the day. What's your problem? <laughs> take over the day. Take over the day. What's your problem? Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if you... Uh, can you say again, watch the evening watch, the, the evening watch stands for or what it's... Uh, what that's that to God the evening watch is where the money look We start our day by the daylight mm -hmm. But God doesn't see it like that because the daylight is already the future to us mm -hmm. But to God the evening is the beginning because everything to us is a replay to him is a replay Yeah, so he sees the evening before the morning so for you, if you're praying in the morning, you're already late. God wants you to pray when he sees your morning, not when you see your morning. So that's what the way you can receive his mind to know what he wants you to do when the day comes. Yeah. That is why Jesus used to pray in the evening. He would pray in the, in the, fourth, or the fourth watch. And you come down in the morning from the mountain and say, uh, I, must, I must do yeah. what my, I yeah. must be about my father's business. Mm -hmm. I only do what I've seen my father do. When did he see his father go to Galilee? It's because he was shown. It's the hours and the times. Mm. That's good. Okay. So he was always ahead of the curve. When people are waiting to see what is going to happen, he already knows what was going to happen because he was at the moment where it was going to happen. 
when God taught me about this and I've used this many times in other teachings was I was uh, I was uh, at the house that I was staying in before and I had just finished serving God those days we were in a small living room and I was in my bed praying in tongues and I was so excited because of how the great move of God was and I, I, as I was resting just praying all of a sudden I saw one of the ladies that was there come into my room that lived in the house that I was in came and gave me a $20 check and a $50 Chase Bank check and said um, prophet the women you prayed for told me to give you this and I said no 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 I don't want anybody's money I don't want to corrupt because I did not understand even the principles of giving mm -hmm. them so I rejected it I rejected it and she said no you know what they gave it to me to give it to you so she put it on my table and goes out anybody that knows me personally knows I'm not a money person yeah anybody that knows me I promise you I have outgiven a lot of people that I know that's Very true. few people can say they outgive me. Very few people. I guarantee you. So I rejected it. And she just said, well, she left it on my table and walked out. The moment she walked out of the door, I felt like my, my breath came back to myself. <gasps> and I opened my eyes and I saw her knocking the door at 6 a.m before she was preparing for work. The ladies that were in prayer, they told me to give you this. Wow. The same exact conversation. So I held my head, I was like, didn't we just talk? She looked at me like, what is wrong with this person? I said, no, 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 we really just talk. She said, no, 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 no. I don't know what you're talking about. She said, well, here, she left it on the table and walked out. She dressed the same. The only thing that was different in that conversation is I was surprised. I did not know that I was ahead of time. Wow. So I interrupted the conversation by saying, no, we had this conversation. She said, no, what are you talking about? Well, they told me to give you this and she just left it and walked out. So exactly how it happened in the beginning of it and the end of it, the middle of it, I'm the one who interrupted it because I was shocked. <laughs> Is this making sense to someone? Yes, no. <sighs> so understanding the watches of prayer are just important as your prayer. Amen. Understanding the watches of prayer is just as important as prayer. I want everybody go to prophetlovi.com, give God something, and I want you to remember this. Do these things you are learning. Your faith will be ineffective if you hear a word and you just say, it's a good word and you sleep on it. Yeah. You're not making any progress. So you have to make sure that you implement it. You have to make sure that what God has given you to do, give it such a priority so that you can see results in it. If you don't give it a priority, if you don't make it a center of where you want to be, if you're not driven, if you're not driven by that, you remain in the same place. Make it a lifestyle. If the Lord Jesus made it a lifestyle, if Daniel made it a lifestyle, if Joseph, if Moses, if all the great men and women of God of Scripture did that, you ought to do that too. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Glory, Glory be to Jesus. Jesus. Well, God bless you. God increase you as you follow after these principles. May God take you high continually that every device of the enemy you will know of it before it's released against you, that you will be able to overcome every single thing that the enemy is trying to do against you. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus increase you. Amen and amen and amen. This is Prophet Elias. Shalom, shalom.